Hi, my name is Wendy Olson. I'm at the University of Manchester in the Department of Social Statistics. And I'd like to tell you about market research. It's a course unit of 10 credits in social statistics, but it actually covers a lot of different types of data collection methods. And the undergraduates in the course have really enjoyed it in the past. They've been very enthusiastic with large classes and we form into small groups for some of the work. But market research is an optional unit and it's on the BA Econ with data analytics. That's a, a stream within the BA Econ and also the BAS with data analytics. So, you know, it's available to quite, quite a lot of different people and you do meet people from other departments in market research. So I was going to give you an example of how market research actually works. If you have a product like these headphones, one of the questions you might ask is how well is it going to sell? Is it obsolete? This one has a wire and perhaps we need to look at, you know, remote headphones. And so when you're thinking as a firm of how to modify the product, you've got to do some interviews and qualitative research to explore possible modifications. And that's what focus groups are often used for. They'll have some prototypes of the new form of a headphone and they'll ask different groups of people how they respond to that new style. Uh, so the focus group participants are not experts, they're the buyers and the experts are on the side of the firm. So in market research, we make all these distinctions between firms and producers versus the users of information, the commissioner of research, and then the consumer. And you actually learn a lot about the real economy. Also in market research, the objective is to know what market research is. And we don't exclude government research from that definition because many products are produced by governments. So if you think of higher education or health services, if it's a government service, then the government does want to evaluate what is being done and how well the service is provided. And even some products are provided by government, for example, roads and schools. And so you have public-private partnerships and in market research, we do consider the possibility of doing research for the public sector or even about the public sector. And, and so it's, again, it's an introduction to the world of work. There's a lot of transferable skills. The course does cover the collection of primary data using questionnaires. So we talk about the flow of the questions, the wording of the questions, how you shouldn't use a double-barreled question. And students will be able to conduct a sampling methodology for the survey using questionnaire or online survey. And so we do talk a bit about random sampling and clustered and stratified sampling, which help make the sample better. Uh, then for the discussion around interviews, we look at non-random samples. So there's quite a few topics which are about methods, but all the examples are from industry, including finance. And we have had a lot of people from accounting and finance in the class in the past, which has been fine. It's been lovely. And you know, people from all over social sciences have been mixing. Um, another topic that's in the final part of this module is sort of how it relates to the world of work and the ethics around research at work. So there are ethics for doing market research. And we advise students that based on this course unit, you can actually join the Market Research Society, MRS, and you could get a certificate or, and become a certified market researcher, but you would have to sign up to their code of ethics. And one of the things that that raises is the question whether it's ethical to use internet data. And so although this course doesn't use internet data as a source, we discuss the ethics around that compared with primary data collection. Most people think the internet is a source of secondary data, but for us in market research, we're very cautious about the privacy of the people who've put their information on the web and the purposes. So we wouldn't assume that everybody puts things out on social media for their own private in intentions um, without realizing that it could be used by a market research firm. So we really raise the question and, and I personally take the view it's not ethical to use everybody's social media information willy-nilly without asking them. But that's a kind of personal view that's based on my professional reading of a lot of different differences of opinion. In different countries this matter is handled differently and it is an international course. So we look at the ethics of research from an international point of view. We have examples from many countries all over the world. Well, I hope you've enjoyed hearing about it. Remember me, Wendy Olson, and the Department of Social Statistics, and hope you might join our course, Market Research. Mm -hmm.